Hello everyone, Laser Pictures here. So uh, I just realized that I was aligning one of my projectors here. Uh, and I thought that while I was doing that, I might as well give you guys a little peek inside. This is kind of a really quick, rough video. Uh, but I have thought about kind of producing a more in-depth kind of video, kind of explaining the technical aspects behind these shows. If that's something that you'd be interested in, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, and I might produce that video in the future. But for now, uh, I'll show you guys inside uh, a little bit of background about this projector. Uh, so this is actually a five and a half watt laser projector uh, that uses all diode technology. Uh, many older projectors used something called a DPSS, uh, especially for the green and blue channels. Uh, but diodes are more stable uh, and basically uh, since they're just a solid state semiconductor, they're far less sensitive to things like temperature changes, uh, which makes it very ideal for a laser projector that is used in kind of a wide variety of applications. And uh, these don't have any problems uh, even on chilly nights. And these were actually my main projectors. Uh, this one and the other one, it's uh, exactly the same. Uh, these are the main projectors I used to draw those lines on my house on Christmas. Uh, so I'll show you inside, just removing the lid here. Uh, it looks very complicated at first, but really there's only kind of a few key components here. Uh, and of course the centerpiece is this array of laser diodes uh, that are all combined using optics and then the special dichroic glass uh, that basically allows you to selectively combine uh, certain color channels. Uh, just imagine them really as a mirror, except they only reflect certain colors and allow everything else to kind of pass through it. Uh, so for example, you might have one that allows a blue to pass through it, but will actually reflect green. And that's actually what this one right here is. I just kind of have it on a pattern here, just cycling through colors. But when the green channel comes on, you actually, I'll show you how that combines them. And the same thing for the red one, except this one now reflects only red and passes both uh, green and blue together. Um, you can actually see that there, how it's combining them. Uh, and then also for the red one, you kind of have this weird setup where you have lots of individual tiny lasers combined. You can see each one of those uh, laser diodes in there. Uh, and the reason that this is done, since this is actually a very a rather nice projector, uh, that improves the quality of the beam. Uh, but it is a little bit of a nightmare if any one of those tiny little mirrors in there uh, gets out of whack. Luckily, that hasn't happened to me yet, and I've only had to adjust a couple things in here like I was doing today. I actually had to fix the two green ones to put them back on top of each other. Um, there's also kind of this interesting set of prisms in front of the blue laser and that's actually to correct the rather crappy output of the blue laser. Uh, the blue lasers are available in very high power uh, single diodes so that's why there's only one. Uh, the least number is required but they have to add some additional correction again because this is a nice laser. A cheaper one they may not. Uh, and you can see that dichro I was talking about earlier, dichroic glass combining the blue and green channel together there. Uh, so basically these are all just combined down uh, and then they're sent kind of with this one more bounce mirror to the galvos here, the galvanometers. Uh, you could think of them as essentially really accurate motors and they're actually the way that all the laser images are scanned. Uh, the bottom mirror there is the x-axis and the top is the y. Uh, and together, they're actually moving to draw the pattern over there that's being projected, uh, just at about, in this case, about 20,000 points per second. Uh, and then there's actually a shutter in that beam path too. That can actually be activated. Uh, it's, base, it's mostly a safety feature. In case you need to shut the beam off really fast, you can put a physical block in it using that shutter there. Uh, everything else in here is really just kind of, there's like some power supplies, uh, since everything takes quite a lot of power. Uh, and then some boards here for safety and stuff. And the amplifier here, this amp, it's really just an audio amplifier basically, or, or it's very similar to one. And it actually takes the signal from the computer here and amplifies it so it can drive those motors. Uh, and this is just basically a very brief overview uh, of how this whole thing actually works. Uh, and I'll probably be putting the cover back on here pretty soon. But yeah, I hope you guys find it interesting. And yeah, feel free to let me know if you would like to see uh, any more kind of behind the scenes uh, stuff like this.